Today I've got a nice number theoretic problem from a 1952 math contest, and this is called the Miklos Schweitzer math contest. So I don't know if I pronounced that well, but I think I did an okay job. Maybe post in the comments. So let's see what we have here. We'd like to show that if n, capital N, is a perfect number, we'll review what that is, then this product over all primes dividing n of p over p minus 1 is bound strictly between 2 and 4. Then in addition, we will show that if n is odd, then this upper bound of 4 can be replaced with 2 times the cube root of 2. And those of you who are knowledgeable about perfect numbers might know that this kind of in addition statement here is really quite interesting, and that's because it is unknown if there even are any odd perfect numbers. And if there are, they have to be quite large. There are results that say that the smallest ones are like on the order of 10 to the 53 or something. So in fact, Probably, I should say, all perfect numbers are even. So this is really just, well, if some of them are odd, we have this additional rule here. Well, let's recall what a perfect number is, because we haven't done that yet. Let's recall that a perfect number is a number that can be written as the sum of all of its divisors. Except for itself, of course. So let's say that 6, or let's notice that 6 is a perfect number because it can be written as 1 plus 2 plus 3. And those are all of the divisors of 6 except for 6 itself. Or maybe we could write this as 2 times 6 is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 6. So twice the perfect number can be written as the sum of actually all of the divisors. The next perfect number is the number 28. And 28 can be written as 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14. Those are all of the divisors of 28 except for 28 itself. Okay. So I'm going to look at this even case first, which is probably the only case, but that's a big conjecture like, like I pointed out. And we'll look at the even case because it's actually quite simple, and then we'll tackle this odd version. Okay, so here's something that's very well known, and I should say that I think it's legal to use this result because this is an undergraduate math contest where students have probably seen this sort of result. So here's the result. If n is even and perfect, then that means we know the form of n. That means n can be written as 2 to the k times 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. And in addition, we know that this 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 is a prime. So every even perfect number is of this form. And in fact, primes of that form are called Mersenne primes. It's unknown if there are infinitely many Mersenne primes, though. Okay, so that means we know exactly the prime divisors of n. So let's write that down. So prime divisors of n are only the number 2, well, because it's even, and this Mersenne prime, which is 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. There are only two prime divisors. But that's in line with our two examples down here. The only prime divisors of 6 are 2 and 3. The only prime divisors of 28 are 2 and 7. Okay, so let's calculate the product as described here and show that it's bound between 2 and 4. So our product in this case, I'll just call it product, but I mean this thing right here is in fact equal to 2 over 2 minus 1. That would be the first prime. And then it'll be 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 minus 2 because it's p over p minus 1. But let's notice that 2 minus 1 is just the number 1, so that's not really worrisome. And then this term right here, this 2 to the k plus 1, can be written as 2 times 2 to the k 
minus 1. And I think it's useful to write it like that because we can make this simplification by canceling the 2's from the numerator and the denominator. And that means our product is in fact of the form 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 over 2 to the k minus 1. But now we can perform something like polynomial long division on this, thinking about 2 as our variable. Or maybe if you really wanted to, you could add and subtract the same number. So let's put the minus 1 over here and see what we will add and subtract. And in fact, I think maybe the good thing to add and subtract here would be like the number 2 will subtract and then we'll add 2 as well. Why would we like to do that? Because if we take the stuff what I'm, which I'm putting in purple parentheses and perform that division, we get the number 2 and then we just have 2 minus 1 over that denominator. Okay, so this is going to be 2 plus 2 minus 1, which is 1, over 2 to the k minus 1. So that's the value of this product. But notice that the value of this product is most definitely always bigger than the number 2, and it is always less than the number 4. So that means we've achieved our inequality in the first case when n is even. Now let's go ahead and look at the second case. Now for the second case, we'll look at the case when n is odd, but this is actually kind of more general. This could cover the even case as well with just a little bit of um, rewriting. Okay, so let's take n and write it with its prime factorization. So it'll be p1 to the m1 times p2 to the m2 all the way up to pk to the mk, where those pi's are distinct primes, and in fact, we know that they are odd primes. So pi are distinct odd primes. And furthermore, all of the mi are bigger than or equal to one. So that's capturing just the prime factors of p. Okay, so now we know that we can write 2n as the sum of all divisors, including n itself. But now we can rewrite those divisors kind of in an algorithmic way. And it's really like some sort of n-dimensional or k-dimensional array, I should say but I'll just sketch it out with a two-dimensional array, and then I think it's pretty clear how this goes. So this is gonna be the sum of one plus P1 plus P1 squared plus all the way up to P1 to the M1. So those are all the divisors of P of N that just have a factor of P1. And then down this column, I'll add everything that's P2. So 1 plus P2 plus P2 squared, all the way up to P2 to the M2. And then I'll fill in the middle of this as well. So right here, I'll put P1 times P2. This will be P1 squared times P2. All the way up to this, this will be P1 to the M1 times P2. Then the same thing is going down here. So this will be P1 times P2 to the M2 all the way up to P1 to the M1 times P2 to the M2. So like I said, this is just focusing on everything that is a factor containing P1 and P2, but this can be extended fairly easily. And now to each of these, let's say maybe to each of these columns, we can apply the rule for the sum of a finite geometric series. So I'll let you recall that if you need to, but we'll just write it down. So the sum of our first column will be P2 to the M2 plus one minus one over P2 minus one. So like I said, that's the sum of a finite geometric series. But next up, we'll have exactly the same sum, but everything will be multiplied by P1. So this will be plus P1 times this same sum, which I'll maybe just put a big star for. And then next, we'll have P1 squared times this same sum for the same reason. And then reaching all the way to the end, we'll have P1 to the M1 times this same sum, which again, I'm writing with a star. Great.
But now we can factor that star out, which is this term right here, and we'll have a finite geometric series with P1. And we can sum up that finite geometric series with P1, and we'll get P1 to the M1 plus one minus one over P1 minus one times our star, which was P2, M2 plus one minus one over P2 uh, minus one. But we don't just have two prime divisors, we have k total prime divisors, but this kind of thing is just gonna keep going and going and going, and that's gonna give us this product over all of the prime divisors. So we can write this as P1 to the M1 plus one minus one, or that should be k, I should say, over PK minus one. Okay, great. So now I'm gonna like, summarize some stuff at the top of the board and then we'll work towards the end. Okay, so on the last board we ended up with the following formula which I have rewritten a little bit. We had two times n, but I'll write n as a, its prime factorization, was this product formula involving finite geometric series of our primes. So reading it, writing it in product notation would be the product as i goes from one to k pi, to the mi plus one minus one over pi minus one. Okay, but notice we wanna show that something is bigger than two. We've got a two right here. That motivates us to divide and get a two on one side of the equation. So let's do that. We have two is in fact equal to the product as i goes from one to k of pi to the mi plus one minus one over pi to the mi times pi minus one. Notice I just div divided by each of these one at a time and put them in the appropriate product. But now let's start doing an inequality to get to our middle part right here. So notice that this is less than what we would have if we just got rid of the minus one, and that's the product as i goes from one to k of pi to the mi plus one over pi to the mi and then pi minus one. But some stuff cancels. This pi to the mi cancels this mi here, and we have pi to the one over pi minus one but that's just an indexed way of writing this product right here. So I'll just write that this is equal to our product. Like I said, it's this thing over here just indexed in a slightly different way, indexed kind of um, numerically instead of descriptively. And then how do we get this upper bound? Well, that's a bit tricky. So let's maybe write upper bound here. And I sh think I pointed at the wrong upper bound, this new upper bound of two times the cube root of two. And how we can do that is note that if P is an odd prime, but really I think all we need is P to be a real number bigger than or equal to three. And so you could do this kind of with calculus. So if P is an odd prime, then we have the following inequality. So P over P minus one cubed is less than P to the M plus one minus one over P to the M times P minus one to the fourth power. So that's what we'd like to show. And I'll argue that that will finish it all off. Okay, so how can we show this? So let's notice that this inequality is equivalent to the following inequality, which I can get via some simplification. So I have P minus one cubed in the denominator here, P minus one to the fourth in the denominator here. So that leaves me with a P minus one to the fourth over on the right hand side. Next I have P cubed here, P to the four M here. I can move some stuff around and that'll give me P to the four M plus three is less than p to the m plus one minus one to the fourth power over p minus one. So something like that. But then maybe from here what we do is multiply the p minus one up and that'll give us the equivalent inequality of p to the four m plus four minus p to the four m plus 
3 is less than p to the m plus 1 minus 1 to the fourth power. Or showing that the polynomial described by f of x, which is x to the 4m plus 4 minus x to the 4m plus 3 minus x to the m plus 1 minus 1 to the fourth power is less than 0 for all x bigger than or equal to 3. And you can show that fairly easily with calculus. I won't do that. Maybe I'll leave that as a homework exercise. But showing that homework exercise is equivalent to showing our goal inequality right here. So let's maybe bring this, goal, this inequality that we've just shown up here. And so p is bigger than or equal to 3. We have p over p minus 1 cubed is less than p to the m plus 1 minus 1 over p to the m times p minus 1 to the fourth power. And then we'll finally use that to establish our upper bound. So let's just recall, so far we've gotten this lower bound in our odd perfect number case. And we proved this rule up here that really held for all real numbers bigger than or equal to 3. Now we'll apply that by maybe taking this cube here and putting it as a 3 in the denominator of the exponent over here and then applying this inequality. So that inequality applied to every term of the product will give us something like this. We're taking the product over all primes dividing n of p to the m plus 1 minus 1 over p to the m times p minus 1. And then this is all raised to the 4 thirds power. But let's recall that this object right here was exactly equal to 2, kind of as a remnant of this formula that we worked with quite a bit earlier. So this is equal to 2 to the 4 thirds, but 2 to the 4 thirds is exactly 2 times the cube root of 2, establishing this new upper bound. And that's a good place to stop.